Two things I want you to do before we start the video. Number one is check out this channel, Boxing for MMA. Brilliant channel. That's what's compiled the training footage here that I'm going to use for this analysis. Go over there, check it out. And number two, consider checking out my Patreon and pizza. I don't monetize videos, I don't own the footage, and I don't want weird advertisers like gamblers who ruin people's lives on my video. So consider checking out that Patreon and pizza. Three fifty a month, exclusive training footage, more commentaries. You know, about the same price as getting a latte a month. My advice is get the latte. So we'll be looking at Jack Della Maddalena, boxing training, seeing what we can learn and how you can apply it in your training. So let's start first. He's hitting his hand pads, hitting the one, two. He's hitting the one, two, and he's reloading on the right straight. And his pad man throws the left hand back. Generally, if you're a pad man and someone throws a right hand, you want to check their guard by throwing your left hand. See how quickly they can get the hand back to the face because that's a normal counter. And he's doing a very basic combo, but completely underused in MMA. One, two, one. If we look back here, he's going one, two, one. Boom. Well, if we go back a little bit, he's going one, two, one. Absolutely amazing combo, underutilized by most fighters. Alexander Volkanovsky does it really well. And if you watch amateur boxing, this is one of the main scoring combos in amateur boxing. Boxing in general, one of the most underused combos, but it's starting to get its good use in MMA. Closing the door with that lead straight almost, rather than always closing the door with the hook, which can be a bit open sometimes, especially with the takedown. There he's going jab, hook, cross. Doubling up on one hand and then landing with the right and pivoting off. This is the job of a good pad man. A good padman will make you move. He'll fire shots back and test your defense. Because if they're not doing that, what's the point? You can practice it all better on the back. Using the uppercut and hitting that left hook. So, hitting the right straight, practicing different e exits. See how it's a small movement. See how he's moving and avoiding those shots back from his padman just by tight, tight gaps. Here he's practic practicing his southpaw game. Uses a lot of... Doubling up on the lead side to land the backhand. Jab and uppercut. See how that right hook comes out a little bit wider when he's southpaw. Because generally if he's fighting an orthodox fighter, he's going to need to test with that lead shoulder. And loop it around the lead shoulder a bit more. There he's practicing his hook into body work. Keeping nice bent knees. One of the things I say most when I'm coaching martial arts is keep your knees bent. People get the legs straight when throwing combinations. And as soon as the legs are straight, there's no more push. There's no more drive and it's harder to move. He's moving, hitting the hook, uppercut. No amazingly bizarre, complicated combinations. Simple combinations, but his pad man is just testing his movement and testing his defense between. Here he's using the southpaw. See how it's slightly longer now it's southpaw? His pad man's in an opposite stance. Generally, if you go opposite stance, the game will a little bit and you're using your longer shots, straight shots, and then looping right hook. He used that a lot in his contender series fight, that right hook from southpaw. Circling. See how he's circling and practicing setting his feet on the right hook. He's not just throwing it on the spot. Circling, circling, and then dropping into his right hook. If we look again, you know, sometimes we call that a ward hook, that type of drill, but obviously it'd be more like orthodox. Circling, and then just practicing setting your feet. You don't really use your arm too much. He's just pulling his left shoulder back to leverage into the hook. Really, really good drill. Circle, and then hit the hook. Because that circling is providing the power already, you just need to set... Pull your left shoulder back if you're southpaw. Right shoulder back if you're orthodox. A little bit of stand switching. Some of that we saw in the Now You Anyway video is even though these are professional, super experienced fighters, they will groove the movement first. See how he did it slowly. He does this, bump, bump, slowly, and then comes around. Nice tight angle as he hits that pivot around. And then back to southpaw. He switched stance out of range there as well. He's not switching stance right in front of the guy. Using that hand fight, always getting that hand fight a little bit practice when you go in opposite stance. Small steps, and there he goes again. Just a little bit of circling, and then sets into a left hook. It's always important to practice that circling, and then landing solid. Right uppercut to right hook body, turning the angle to get the angle on the body shot, not just throwing them straight ahead. That's another reason people get caught when throwing body shots. I love body shots, but... People get caught throwing them and are discouraged from throwing them because they'll throw them straight ahead. There's a really good video by Ricky Hatton ages ago where he's talking about getting to the side and hitting to the pit of the stomach. That's what we're seeing from Jack Dilla Maddalena there a little bit. We were seeing some counter shots, counter work from Maddalena. See how it's small, tight movements and he's not leaning outside of his knees. He's just doing a little twist. That sets him back up for the right straight counter there. He replaces his chin with his shoulder. That sets him up for the counter. 
again using doubling up on the lead side into the backhand generally you're not just going to be able to step in and one two a lot of doubling up on the same side this is a bit too too flashy and promo-y here's some shadow boxing see how he's practicing turning through his punches and there's always that little bend in the knee sprawls and he's right back into his stance that's something that he does very well a lot of people will even good fighters you'll see them practice shadow boxing mma shadow boxing they'll sprawl or they'll shoot and they'll switch off here he's right back into the same stance elbows tight knees bent and he's throwing his combinations he's working his defense it's in, it's interesting practicing the defense in the four ounce gloves that's that changes the defense quite a lot some people say should you ever hit pads in four ounce gloves i think a little bit of practice sprinkled in is good obviously it's quite a lot on your wrist to do that every day i tend to wrap them put on big boxing gloves but we're seeing these tight defenses moving around liver shot to low kick it's always difficult to pad those jab to low kick just very very simple combinations it's a stuff between it though that kind of separates it he lands in his stance and his hands come back into a good position and more importantly i think more importantly for mma more than just the hands coming back into position because they don't actually cover a lot is the elbows coming back into the ribs that way you're ready to frame and defend any takedowns and the shoulders coming back into position so that you're ready to shoulder roll and block it you get your hands back in good position yeah but they don't defend a huge amount that's just more b-roll shadow boxing footage nice short controlled punches and he has his priority shots not each punch is a big swing not each punch is just a tap when he shadow boxes he has priority shots where he'll turn through slightly more like that left hook there he was throwing his, his straight shots quite controlled and then the left hook comes through a little bit more working on the bag leading with the right hand as well sometimes the right hand leverages into the left sometimes the left hand leverages into the right and there's priority shots it's not always bang 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 he is he's always a good drill do it every time in the warm-up it's just kind of this light sparring in front of your training partner see how again when we're talking about the elbows tight so he's practicing with someone level changing in or throwing the right hook and ending up in the clinch it's more important i would say for mma to focus on bringing your elbow position back into your ribs more than it is just throwing your hands back up because your hands don't cover everything you can easily get caught on the chin or caught in the ear with your hands up like think ryan bernoit versus sergio pettis so sergio pettis was actually the one with his hand up but he still got caught in his chin because that forearms glove doesn't cover the, that much so it's more about shoulder position keeping your shock absorbs under you your knees a bit bent and keeping those elbows tight so you can guard when they're coming to the clinch here's more sh southpaw shadow boxing work on the paddles paddles are really good paddles are really good if you're fighting a wrestler because then when you're fighting a wrestler you don't want to overthrow your shots and you can do that without even realizing when you're hitting just regular focus mitts and tie pads you can throw into the pad and use that to catch yourself but if someone's using paddles you have to control that yourself because the, the paddles don't really catch you uh, i think that's really good when you're fighting wrestlers when you people where you're not just going to swing at them nice balanced knees bend we've all done these hotel room workouts where you've kind of got to imagine the wall in the hotel room is the wall in the cage so you've got to circle off just like that see how generally circling to the open side if you're circling right when he's orthodox you'll circle left when he's southpaw a little bit more or hit that pivot when he's southpaw little fence between a little bounce see elbows tight that's one of the main i think the main separators between good boxers good mma boxers and people who aren't as developed is that tight elbow position the tight elbow position is really really important it helps you get into that clinch position helps you defend kicks helps you defend takedowns obviously there are exceptions to that rule so these these clips are a bit more edited up hitting the speed bag the speed bags they're one of those things where you put up in a gym and you'll take it down a week later because beginners will just walk up to it and just smack it without knowing what they're doing doing these rolling back fist punches and it'll be loud as fuck and you'll be like what am i doing i can't talk to anyone who's trying to pay or trying to sign up for membership or i just can't hear myself think i've got to take this down they're proper annoying 
Uh, I actually think the speed bag is is best just to punch normally. The the origin was a lot of it was to practice hand traps from the the bare knuckle days and tattoos as they'd call it. Not tattoos as in tattoos on your skin. Tattoos as in tattoos in the rhythm. If you watch a lot of Sugar Ray Robinson, well, there's not a lot of it, but some of Sugar Ray Robinson's old footage, you just practice on the speed bag and throw these nasty overhands where his back foot would follow through and he's just throwing a solid punch on a speed bag where he can follow through. And I think that's possibly more applicable. They're really good for high kicks as well, speed bags. More applicable to MMA than and boxing itself than just doing these diddly 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 deeds. And we see here, he was on the speed bag and just... Just practicing solid punching form. Again, it's something that doesn't catch you. It doesn't catch you, so you have to practice your own balance. Hitting a target whilst practicing your own balance and not leaning into something. Little elbows in close, mixed in with the boxer. That's something that's a big thing. The big thing with pad work is sometimes you just got to let the fighter, the person hitting the pads to decide what shot for what range, so you hold it the same. You want your, pad, you want your fighter to realize when they're too close to throw a solid punch. So they just put the elbow in. Same with kicks and knees. Realize when it's too close for a kick, so they just throw a knee. Nice tight head movement. He's never leaning outside of his knees when he's throwing this tight head movement. Countering on the back foot. He works on the back and the front foot. See how that was a... So see how he's coming in here. He hits one, two. Cross hook. And see how he keeps his elbows tight. And he's on the loaded up on his back foot but not leaning his head back and forth it's more that everything's in the back foot on those back foot counter drills everything's in that right foot if you're orthodox being sprung on that so you can follow in with solid shots Here's a little bit of him just working his solid shots and defense in the apex, which I'm now a tiny bit familiar with. I'll be more familiar with on August the 15th. Nice and nice and controlled pad work. See how he doubles up on the same side. And he has, there'll be like double attacks. So the uppercut leads to the cross and the cross leads to the uppercut. And again, a good pad man following him, firing back. Because then there's not really much point in a pad man if they're not really firing back. Again, hit the bag. He's circling off. He's not moving back in a straight line. Whatever space you're in, whether your space is a cage, a ring, or just in some mats in a room, people with really good footwork, like Jack Della Maddalena, we mentioned this in the Petty Ann video a while ago, whatever space they're in, they still visualize it as if it's a cage or a ring, so they don't just walk themselves back into a wall or follow people around. Whatever space they're in, whether it's just a set of mats like that, like a set of mats like that, uh, a full MMA cage or a boxing ring their footwork is always tuned in so on the front foot they're always tracking someone or if they're on the back foot like here which is a lot more back foot focused he's circling off to the side he, he's going to hit pivots when he gets too close the roll out the roll out's always a good way to get off the off the back of the cage or fence or wherever just a little bit of sparring, like light sparring footage to finish up this video. See how he's hitting some simultaneous counters. Simultaneous counters are always awkward to drill. See how he's dipping his head off line and hit the right straight. Then he dips. That's a slightly delayed counter. The next one, dipping the head off line and hitting the, the body hook. But simultaneous counters are the most important, most effective counters. But they are the hardest to drill because you can't really put a pad there in most situations. So it's this, this kind of drilling where it's light and it's controlled is the best for simultaneous counters. So he was dipping and jabbing. He was dipping and hitting the right straight. There's an example there where he's southpaw, where he gets his head outside of the jab, jab hand, outside of the left hand, and throws the uppercut like that. And then he's moving off. If you're throwing a left uppercut, generally, you want to move to your right. If you're throwing a right uppercut, you want to move to your left. You don't want to throw a right uppercut and move to your right because you move into their left hook and vice versa with the left uppercut. But simultaneous counters... Probably the best way to drill is this super light floor spar. There. Okay. So, I've rambled about Jack Dillon Middle Lane, my favourite my favorite boxer in MMA. My favourite boxer in the UFC. I really like Quan Wan Il as well. My favourite boxers, Quan Wan Il, 
Jack Dillon middle laner, Jai Herbert. Some of my favourite boxers in MMA, Ilya Tapura is really good. I've rambled about that for 15 minutes. Hopefully, you get one thing useful from that. If not, just go and buy that latte.